Everything will change when this aircraft takes off. Boeing and Airbus have reigned supreme in commercial aviation for over half a century. But now, a new challenger is rising that is backed by the immense economic power of China and it's ready to rewrite the game's rules. Who's that? Let's find out. This aviation revolution isn't marked by bold declarations or dramatic strikes. It's quietly unfolding inside design centers scattered across China, where CAD software replaces weapons, algorithms replace firepower and ambition, on a scale previously unimaginable drives everything. Beijing isn't just building airplanes. It's constructing an entire aviation ecosystem designed to break the Western grip on how the world flies, and it's moving faster than anyone ever dared to predict. Picture this. By 2040, airlines worldwide will need over 39,000 new aircraft worth more than $6 trillion. For decades, Boeing and Airbus have battled for these lucrative orders, while smaller players like Embraer, ATR, and Bombardier quietly filled niche markets. But China is done watching from the sidelines. With a domestic air travel market projected to surpass the US as the world's largest by 2043, powered by a population of 1.4 billion and over 200 million middle-class households, this country sees aircraft independence not just as an economic strategy, but as a matter of national security. In an era where trade wars and sanctions are weaponized, relying on Western-built aircraft is a critical vulnerability that China refuses to accept. Instead, it has embarked on what may be the boldest industrial undertaking of the 21st century, developing an entirely homegrown commercial jetliner capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world's best. And what you're about to witness will either leave Western aerospace executives stunned or terrified. Let's start with what seems like the least exciting aircraft in China's growing aviation family, the C-909, formerly known as the ARJ-21. At first glance, you might wonder, why should anyone care about a regional jet that first flew back in 2008? Especially one that looks like an old McDonnell Douglas MD-80, and you'd be right to ask. That resemblance is no accident. Back in the 1990s, when McDonnell Douglas partnered with Beijing, they transferred a wealth of technology before being absorbed by Boeing. China never forgot that treasure. But here's what makes the C-909 fascinating. It wasn't built to impress the world. It was built to teach China how to build commercial aircraft. Think of it as this country's training wheels. The C-909 marks China's very first step into the world of commercial aviation. It's been mocked for being outdated and inefficient, powered by aging GECF 34 engines and seating only 78 to 97 passengers over a range of 3,700 kilometers. But that entirely misses the point. Each of the 150 C909s delivered is a lesson in motion. Chinese engineers are gaining hands-on experience in everything from supply chain management to flight certification and real-world operations. Air China now operates 34 of these aircraft, quietly building core expertise that's already feeding into far more ambitious projects, and foreign airlines are starting to pay attention. Transnusa Airlines of Indonesia has already put three into service and ordered 30 more. Equatorial Congo Airlines has also placed an order. No, these aren't headline-grabbing numbers, but they reveal something far deeper. China has stepped onto the global commercial aviation stage, and make no mistake, this is only the beginning. If the C-909 was China's warm-up act, then the C-919 is where the real game begins. And here's something that might surprise you. The number of orders for this aircraft has already surpassed the entire current fleet of British Airways. That's right, over a thousand orders and commitments, mostly from Chinese carriers for now, but its ripple effect is global. The C-919 is Beijing's direct challenge to the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. The workhorses of short and medium haul aviation and the most lucrative battleground in commercial aerospace. Taking its first flight in 2017 and entering service with China Eastern Airlines in 2023, this aircraft seats between 158 and 192 passengers and has a range of up to 5,555 kilometers. If those specs sound familiar, it's because they are nearly identical to the 737 MAX and A 320neo. But there's a key difference. While Boeing and Airbus sell their narrow bodies at prices ranging from $80 to $130 million each, this Chinese aircraft is rumored to be offered at a steep discount. And in emerging markets across Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America, price often outweighs brand loyalty. Now you might be wondering, 
Isn't the C919 just a collection of Western parts inside a Chinese shell? And to some extent, yes. For now, it's powered by the CFM Leap 1C, the same engine family used by the Boeing Max and A320neo, and relies on avionics and systems from suppliers like Honeywell and Collins Aerospace. But here's where the long-term game becomes clearer. China isn't just building planes, it's building an entire ecosystem. Comac has already begun testing the CJ-1000A, an indigenously developed high-bypass turbofan engine meant to eventually replace Western power plants. Every C919 delivered today is a strategic springboard, a foothold in the market, while this country quietly works to replace every foreign-made component with homegrown technology. And this might be the first time you heard this. They're not stopping at one variant. China is already developing a stretched version of this aircraft that can carry 50 more passengers, as well as a high-altitude variant built specifically for the demanding conditions of the Tibetan Plateau and the Himalayas. This isn't just product development, it's strategic positioning to ensure that they can offer domestically produced alternatives in crucial segments, even as Boeing and Airbus continue to refine their own narrow-body jets. Now imagine what happens if they succeed. For the first time since the dawn of the jet age, airlines around the world might finally have a real third option in one of the most essential categories of commercial aviation. However, the C919 isn't the top peak. The real game begins with a far bolder ambition. China's wide-body aircraft program, the C929. Imagine yourself as the CEO of a major airline, looking to replace your aging fleet of 787 or A330. For decades, you've only had two options when it comes to twin-engine wide-body jets, Boeing or Airbus. But now, China wants you to consider a third player, Comac. The C929 is Beijing's trump card to break into the duopoly. With seating for 250 to 320 passengers and a range of up to 12,000 kilometers, this aircraft is designed to fly nonstop from Beijing to New York, Shanghai to London, or Guangzhou to Sydney a true leap forward for Chinese aviation. It is the country's first twin-aisle long-haul passenger jet, aimed squarely at competing with the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. But non-stop there. Comac has something more interesting. This aircraft maker is preparing to step into a fierce race, the C939 program. This is no ordinary aircraft, it's a strategic statement. A super jumbo jet built to challenge the Boeing 777X and the largest variants of the A350. In aviation, building a narrow-body jet is one thing, but crafting a wide body that can cross oceans and operate safely and efficiently for over 20 years. That's the industry's ultimate engineering test, and that's exactly where China is heading. However, the C929 and C939 both face significant technical hurdles. Jets like the 787 and A350 use over 50% composite materials in their airframes, technology that China is still working to master at scale. This challenge is one reason Comac originally partnered with Russia's UAC on the C929. That partnership has since collapsed, leaving Beijing to go it alone, though it still receives support from companies like Liebherr for landing gear systems and potentially GE Aerospace for initial engine options. And here's what many Western analysts often overlook. China doesn't need the C929 to outperform the 787 or A350. It just needs it to be good enough and significantly cheaper. Air China has already signed on as the launch customer, with an optimistic delivery target of 2027, though 2029 seems more realistic. Comac plans three variants, the C929500, which is baseline, 250 seats in a three-class layout, the variant 600 with the stretch version, with 280 seats and up to 440 in high density, and the variant 700, which is the largest with 320 seats in three classes. Interestingly, some reports suggest Comac might launch the 600 before the shorter 500 and longer 700. If the C929 is a calculated strategic move, the C939 is a declaration of force. Ever seen a Boeing 777X up close? It's a true beast. The largest twin engine aircraft ever built, folding wingtips, G9X engines nearly the size of a 737's fuselage. Now imagine China building something to take it head on. The C939 is still in its early design phase, but the vision is clear. An ultra long range wide body, seating around 400 passengers with a range of 13,000 kilometers, 
capable of linking any two major global hubs with just one stop. Powering such a behemoth will require a new engine. The CJ2000, also known as AEF3500, an enhanced version of the CJ1000A currently being tested on the C919. This engine won't be ready before 2030, setting a realistic timeline for when the C939 might take to the skies. If the C919 is a launch pad, the C929 is a steep ascent and the C939 is the summit China aims to conquer. A summit that, if reached, could shift the global balance of power in aviation. Here's what most people miss. China isn't just building aircraft, it's building an entire ecosystem around them. From global maintenance networks to simulator training centers and airline financing, this holistic strategy means that by the time the C-939 arrives, China will be ready to support it seamlessly. The C-939 is this country's boldest bet yet. Not just to compete with the West, but to surpass it with next-gen efficiency and design. Success isn't guaranteed, but underestimating their resolve would be a serious mistake. What does this mean for aviation's future? Imagine a world where Boeing and Airbus no longer dominate where your next long-haul flight could be on a Chinese-designed aircraft. For airlines, Comac offers something they haven't had in decades, leverage. Even if they never buy a Chinese jet, having a credible third option gives them bargaining power. For passengers, more competition could mean lower fares, though safety scrutiny will be inevitable, just as it once was for Boeing and Airbus. How about the Western manufacturers? For them, the threat is real, losing China's massive domestic market facing price-sensitive rivals in emerging regions and watching their long-standing duopoly slowly erode. This is about more than airplanes. It's about who shapes the future of technology and infrastructure. Each Comac flight isn't just about transporting passengers, it's about a rising nation proving it can master the world's toughest engineering challenges and claim its place at the global table. China's path to conquering the skies is anything but smooth or certain. Comac faces tough technical challenges, strict certification barriers, and the turbulence of geopolitics. Building a competitive commercial aircraft isn't just difficult, it's one of the most complex endeavors in modern industry. But the game is on. Western manufacturers still hold key advantages in technology, safety track records, and global support networks. Yet, China wields a different kind of power. Patience. They don't need to win today. They're playing the long game where every small victory lays a brick in the foundation of a future where Chinese aircraft don't just fly, but connect the world in ways we've never seen. The global aviation landscape is shifting and it won't look the same again.